today we will be dealing with iteration method problem 2. So let's take a look at the question. Now we are asked to find out the roots of the function f of x is equal to cos x minus 3x plus 1 using the iteration method. So it is clear from the question that this function involves trigonometric terms. So the function is clearly a transcendental equation. So we have to find out uh, the roots of a transcendental equation where trigonometric functions are involved. So let's find out how to solve this equation. So the solution is the steps that we take here is what we did in the previous problems. There is no difference or there is no change in the steps that we have done in the previous problem. But there is a slight change when we consider A and B. So that we will come to. Now the first step as always is to find out A and B such that F of A and F of B are of opposite signs. Since in the question they haven't provided any information regarding A and B, we will have to find out A and B. So in this case, this is what I said we will have a slight variation from what we have done in the previous uh, problem. So it is a very minute variation. So that is nothing but in this case since we are dealing with the trigonometric terms we will introduce different variations of pi so that is we will find out f of 0 so in, in place of a you can find out f of 0 in place of a you can uh, give the value 0 and find out f of 0 so when I find out f of 0 I get the value 2 since cos 0 is what 1 1 minus 3 into 0 which is again 0 plus 1 is equal to 2. So here I got a positive value. So again for b I am going to substitute pi by 2. Now you will be wondering why I am substituting this pi by 2 over here or something which is connected with pi because we are dealing with trigonometric functions and since we are dealing with trigonometric functions we cannot it is uh, it is possible to give some other values but it would be easier if you give something in terms of pi so that's why i have chosen pi by 2 you can either choose pi by 4 pi by 3 that's up to you but right now i have chosen pi by 2 so when i give pi by 2 cos pi by 2 that is what is cos pi by 2 yes it is cos 90 and cos 90 is Yes, it is 0. So, this term is 0 and minus 3 multiplied by pi by 2 is again a negative quantity plus 1 which will the final answer is a negative quantity which is less than 0. So, I get two quantities A and B which are positive and negative uh, such that uh, f of 0 and f of pi by 2 is positive and negative. So, I take 0 as A and pi by 2 as my b okay so here after taking uh, a and b or after finding out a and b what is usually my next step to find out the approximate root or the initial root so here i have taken my initial root as x naught x naught is equal to 0 Okay, so when I find x0, so there also you will be considering why I have taken x0 is equal to 0. So I just took x0 is equal to 0 since I want something uh, which is very easy to calculate upon. Now you can take this x0 as pi by 2, pi by something between 2 and pi by 2. Okay, so you can take it as pi by 4. Uh, that is all up to you. But now, right now I have taken this as x0 is equal to 0 and I am going to find out whether I will get a closer approximation to the roots which lie between 0 and pi by 2. Anyways, the root is lying between 0 and pi by 2. So, I took something which is very easy to calculate. So, I took it as x0 is equal to 0. Never mind if you take something like pi by 4, it's up to you. Okay, as I said. 
now the next step in an iteration method is to find out phi of x the function phi of x now you have to convert your equation into the terms of x so let's have a look so i just started converting it so 3x is equal to uh, cos x plus 1 now x is equal to cos x plus 1 by 3 so this is one way of expressing the whole function in terms of x now there are other ways also like you can take this cos x outside and then you can do some calculations too but that is like um, very tedious because as you move on it becomes a very uh, difficult to calculate the values so i will better stick on to this uh, function itself or this term itself in expressing x in terms of x cos x plus 1 divided by 3 the reason being when you ca calculate so this is again phi of x is equal to cos x plus 1 by 3 so as i said the reason being when you calculate phi dash of x in the next step if you are sticking on to this one then uh, it will be most uh, it will be very much convenient and easy to calculate so i hope all of you know how to differentiate cos x you have already studied this in your high school section so it is nothing but minus sin x divided by 3 now i'm going to uh, find out uh, the modulus of phi dash of x because uh, here i'm only considering the magnitude i'm not uh, interested in the si sign like uh, whether it is negative or positive it doesn't matter i'm only interested in magnitude so that is why i'm going to apply the modulus sign and then i get the answer as sin x divided by 3 then i'm going to tag this as equation a okay now all these steps i hope you have done in your previous problem so what is the next step I am going to apply the initial root into this and find out whether modulus of phi dash of x is less than 0. So that was our one criteria to opt this uh, function or this uh, x value. So when I substitute x0 is equal to 0 in A, I get sin x instead of sin x I'm going to give it as I'm going to replace it by sin x naught so sin x naught is nothing but what sin 0 and I get a value so sin 0 is what 0 itself right so 0 by 3 is 0 which is something less than 1 okay so our criteria our criteria was what modulus of phi dash of x should be less than 1 so that is satisfied over here hence we are considering x is equal to cos x plus 1 power divided by 3 or you can consider f of x as cos x plus 1 divided by 3 now let's move on to the next a step that is we have to find out what is phi of x in i hope you all know what is phi of x so what will be phi of x and just have a thought about that yes it is nothing but phi of x in is cos x in plus 1 divided by 3 now since this is what we have studied in iteration method after finding out phi of xn we always equate it to xn plus 1 and uh, xn plus 1 is what cos xn plus 1 divided by 3 so from this we will have to now start the iteration okay so let's move on to the iteration method So this is the table so here n takes different values like up to 8 xn gives us uh, the values of uh, the uh, roots approximate roots and xn plus 1 is equal to cos xn plus 1 divided by 3 is the formula that we arrived for the or derived for the iteration now when n is equal to 0 what happens to xn xn becomes x naught and we already know the value of x naught that was the initial root so that is 0 and i'm going to apply this uh, x naught is equal to 0 in our formula which we have derived so what we will get x1 
is equal to now i have just worked out here in my working space only the first row the next row you will have to work out so i have given the final answer so i will explain how i did that so i substituted all the values or uh, i substituted the value of x naught in this formula okay so xn plus 1 as i said i get it as x1 then this uh, left hand side that is cos xn instead of cos xn what can i write cos 0 plus 1 the whole divided by 3 now new you know what is cos 0 what is cos 0 1 yes so 1 plus 1 is 2 2 divided by 3 we will get 0.6667 so what is x1 it is 0.667 right so again when you move move to the next row the next iteration when n is equal to 1 again xn becomes x1 so what is x1 yes i have found out x1 and you will get the answer of x1 in the first row that is 0 0.6667 you can write it down over here then what is xn plus 1 it is x2 and what is cos xn here in the second row it is x1 cos x1 so what is cos x1 yes you can substitute this value and by using a scientific calculator you will get the value of cos x1 what is cos x1 cos 0.6667 right plus 1 divided by 3 you will get the final answer okay so similarly moving on you will complete this table and you will arrive at a place where so here i have given um, a condition that my four decimal places the first four decimal places should be equal or till the first four decimal places right so that is the condition i have given in the question so if such a condition arrives you can Mm, find you can stop your iteration so when i found out that um, my sixth iteration i get my x7 uh, that is the seventh root as 0 0.6071 okay then i again go for another iteration i get x8 as 0 0.607101 so again if i give a close look at this i know that my xn and xn, xn plus 1 that is my previous root and the present root the four decimal up to four decimal places they both are the same so right now i am going to stop my iteration and if you want more iteration you can do it that is up to you but as per the question they have only asked up to four iterations so i am going to stop the iteration and hence i am going to uh, reach at a conclusion that my root is 0 0.607101 even if it is 0 0.607105 it's fine okay so i just want to make it sure that the four decimal places are the same that's all so that um, i have arrived at that and i hope you have understood the problem thank you